Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're gonna continue our trip down memory lane with Mate. I'm old! I used GNOME 2 for a long while when it was the default on Ubuntu, and I know these apps, the GNOME 2 apps, on the, like the back of my hand. The problem is, Mate has evolved these apps past what I know, so it's time to see what you get out of the box and if that's any good. Do you know what's really good though? Today's sponsor, Linode. So Linode is a fantastic way to get your own Linux server up and running. It was rated the easiest cloud provider to use on G2, and it has been voted top infrastructure as a service provider by G2 and TrustRadius. Linode offers a ton of one-click deployable servers, like Owncast for example, which lets you run your own Twitch-like streaming service complete with video broadcast and chat, or Apache Guacamole. What's that you ask? Well, Guacamole is a fantastic way to get your own Linux desktop in the cloud that you can access from anywhere you want. And basically you can host that on Linode and get to any other computer and get access to that Linux desktop. It's pretty amazing. If you're more into gaming, you can also deploy your own Valheim or Minecraft server in one click. Linode has a ton of these one-click deployable apps. I use Linode to run my own Nextcloud server, which I use to run this whole channel, so I can't recommend them enough, especially since you can now create your account easily using Google or GitHub. And in the future, if you don't have a credit card, you'll be able to sign up using Google Pay as well, so that's one less barrier to get started. So if you want to get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server, well, head over to the link in the description below and click it. Okay, back to our Mate default applications, and let's begin with the most important app for any desktop, which is the file manager. The one Mate uses is called Caja, or Kaja, if, like me, you cannot do the Spanish Jota. This is a fork of Nautilus, which was the default GNOME 2 file manager and is also the name for GNOME 3's file manager. This iteration is much more powerful than the one you'll find in GNOME 40 though. It supports the basics, like tabs for opening multiple folders at once, an icon view and a list view, and a compact view with per folder display preferences. You also get a nice sidebar that displays your favorite places, but can also be changed to an information panel, a tree view that you can navigate, a history of the places you visited recently, some notes on the current folder, or a list of emblems that you can add to each folder or file to make it easier to find what you're looking for. Kaja will also let you open two panes to have two folders open at the same time. You can also select any column you want to display in the list view, and you can compress, share, encrypt, or sign any file or folder. Preferences are plentiful here, with the ability to change the default view parameters, use single-click or double-click to open items, open each folder in its own window, change the behavior when opening executable files, select what thumbnails you want or don't want to see, and even access some extensions. Now, seriously, comparing this to the current iteration of Nautilus on GNOME 3, I can see why people were mad at the transition. They ripped out a lot of stuff. Kaja isn't as powerful as Dolphin, for example, since most panels can only be displayed in place of another, and you don't have an integrated terminal inside of it, but it's still pretty amazing. Each bookmark you add is also added to the wonderful places menu of Mate, which is really handy, and you have enough settings to really tailor it to your needs. It also opens extremely fast and is super responsive. Now it still lacks the column view, like you would find on the Elementor US file manager, but then again, so does virtually every file manager on Linux. Kaja is definitely a super strong point for Mate and a great file manager. Another very important app for desktop environment is the terminal emulator. But Nick, didn't you say that the terminal isn't necessary anymore on Linux? Yes, and I stand by that. I think the terminal isn't necessary anymore on Linux, but it's still pretty freaking fun to use. So for that purposes, Mate ships with Mate Terminal, a fork of GNOME 2's terminal app. Here again you have your basics, like the tabs, the customizable profiles, the search, and the size management. And speaking of profiles, they are really customizable as well. You can change the font, how the cursor blinks, how you select words or characters, the title of the terminal to identify it faster, of course, all the colors are changeable as well, and you can put any background you want, whether it's a color, an image, or simply a transparent background, although there is no blur by default. It does use that annoying standard method for keyboard shortcuts, where you have to press the shift key on top of the usual keyboard shortcut that you're trying to do, for example, shift plus control plus T to open a new tab instead of just control plus T, but that seems to be the standard in every single terminal, probably not to interfere with the commands from the command line program you're trying to use right now. Not sure that's going to help people learn how to exit out of Vim though. 
You also don't get task completion notifications if you have multiple tabs open or any indicator in the tab itself to show that the job is done, which is a shame because that's super practical. Mati Terminal is perfectly serviceable and you'll be able to get by for what I need to do, it's good enough. More advanced users will probably lament the lack of a split pane view or location bookmarks like KD's console has. Now in terms of text editor, Mate comes with Pluma. It's a fork of GNOME 2's G-Edit and it bears considerable familiarity with it. It's a simple text editor with tabs, printing support, search and replace tools, spell check or statistics on the document you're currently editing. It also has a side pane that lets you move from document to document or navigate the file system, so you could even use it to write and edit code, since it supports syntax coloration for a lot of languages. It lets you decide on the tabulation width or to insert spaces instead of tabs, if you want to use the correct way of indenting your code. It can also do automatic indentation, create backup copies of your documents and have multiple color schemes. It also supports extensions like a Python console, sorting, a snippets tool to insert often used text quickly, but there is no terminal integration here. You also can't use GitHub Copilot in here and I'm sorry, that's too soon. Now Pluma will probably be enough to jot down a few ideas, even to write a little bit of code or edit it, but it's not going to replace your integrated development environment anytime soon. Now Mate also ships with a bunch of utilities, including an image viewer, a document viewer, an archive manager, a calculator, a font viewer, a search tool, a color selection utility, a dictionary, a disk usage analyzer, and a system monitor. And these are all forks of GNOME 2's equivalent utilities. Who could have seen that coming? So we're not going to take a deeper look at all of these, but we're going to focus on a few of them which are more than their basic counterparts. The search tool works well. It's pretty fast, it lets you find files and folders, but not applications. It's definitely handy, but it's no replacement for a global search integrated under a simple keyboard shortcut like you would get in GNOME or KDE. Searching through the whole system thanks to a main menu is definitely easier and faster than accessing a dedicated search tool, especially since that search tool can only search files and documents. If you want to open an app, you need to use the menu itself, which is slower. But it does adhere more to the Unix philosophy of one program for one task. The color selection tool is definitely very useful as well, at least for me, as that's something I need to do very often when I do graphics design at work. Having a nice color picker and color wheel is very practical. The disk usage analyzer is pretty cool as well, especially when you're trying to find what is eating up all your disk space, and the system monitor is pretty enough with nice graphs and the ability to kill any process you want, like a heartless monster. The other utilities are fine, they're in keeping with what you'd expect from a desktop environment. They no surprises there. But Mate does lack a few graphical applications to be a complete desktop environment. First, there is no default app store. GNOME has GNOME Software, KDE has Discover, Pantheon has the App Center, but Mate doesn't have anything of its own. Now, it's probably due to the fact that there was no GNOME 2 program to fork to do that instead. At the time of GNOME 2, you didn't have a graphical software store, you had a package manager, which wasn't nearly as convenient or practical or user-friendly as GNOME Software or Discover, for example. I can understand not wanting to reinvent the wheel, but in that case, if you want something that would integrate well graphically or looks and feels wise with your desktop, you could have gotten the Linux Mint software installer application. It has a menu bar, it looks like a Mate app, it looks like an older GNOME app, it's GDK based, you could have used that instead. There's also no default media player, either for video or audio, which is also a pretty big deal, because distros will have to cover that themselves as well. On Fedora, they use the Parole media player from XFCE and DNF Dragora as a package manager. The former is fine, the latter is definitely not user-friendly enough for a beginner. Seriously, giving a package manager instead of a software store to a beginner user in 2021? That should be a crime. Now, I definitely think that desktops that use GDK, use menu bars, have kind of the same approach to the Linux desktop environment, like for example Mate and XFCE, they should pull forces and develop a common thing, a common media player for video and audio, a common software store, it could work on both desktops, it's going to use the same libraries, they have the same design philosophies. Just pull forces, work together. You also won't find a default calendar app or email app, and that's fine because you have plenty of alternatives to these. But it's still weird to me to have a full-on desktop environment that lacks those mission-critical pieces of a desktop. And it means that distributions have to pick up the slack and implement some other programs 
which might look out of place compared to the default experience that you're shipping. You're basically relinquishing control over the experience that you're giving to your users because you're not providing the entire set of tools that they need. So to conclude, the application set for Mate is good. The file manager is definitely a highlight with its tight integration with the places menu and its multi-purpose side panel. Not trying to restart this debate, but it makes GNOME 3's Nautilus look like a barren wasteland of features, especially considering that all the versions of Nautilus had all of that stuff baked in. Mate default apps are exactly as I remembered GNOME 2's default selection, but with a bit more power added to it, and importantly using updated libraries. Mate, like XFC, isn't a complete desktop environment in my opinion. It lacks too many crucial pieces. No calendar app, no email app, no software store, no audio, no video players. This, these are big important parts of a user experience and not providing them out of the box is basically giving away the control you have over the user experience to the distro. So basically you can't have a complete Mate experience because you're gonna have to implement programs that don't look or feel or were designed by people that have the Mate design sensibilities in mind, which is a shame. Still, if we omit the menu bars, which really aren't my thing at all, the Mate default apps are enough for me to do what I need to do. They are super simple, but they have a lot of power under the hood. And after using KDE for a long while, I really appreciate having that simplicity out of the box compared to the huge complexity that you get out of the box on KDE apps that I had to scale back by removing panels and toolbars and menu bars. This here, simple by default, powerful on the background. So this concludes our tour of what Mate offers in terms of applications out of the box. Now, we still have one more video to go about Mate and that's the customization options. And for this, I will create my own layout and then we'll look at some implementation details that other distributions have made. For example, Ubuntu Mate, which a lot of you have pointed out to me, that is a very good distro. I guess I will take a look at it. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about Slimbook, they're a Spain-based Linux computer manufacturer. They have everything from a monster gaming laptop or desktop to a super small form factor NUC. They have any keyboard layout that you might want. They ship worldwide and they have a wide range of prices for any budget. I basically only use their stuff nowadays, so I can only recommend them. Just get to the link in the description and click there if you need a new Linux device. Slimbook is the way to go. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't stay to like and subscribe or dislike and tell me why in the comments if you didn't appreciate the video. If you want to watch somewhere else and on YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. And if you want to help me continue to do these videos and make this my day job, because that's happening in October, you can support me by going to Patreon or by joining the channel as a YouTube member. You'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.